What about you guys and welcome back once again. Hope you all had a fantastic Christmas and that Santa was good to you and you got some really nice presents. You're gonna have to forgive me if I sound a little bit on the bleh side. I haven't really been feeling well the past couple of days. So if you watched one of my last videos where I talked about what sort of gear do I use, I mentioned that the main lens that I had was the Sony 28mm f2. I recently did a bit of a bold move. Uh, I traded the lens out for something brand new. Oh, what you get, what you get, what you get? So I traded my 28mm for the Samyang 35mm f2.8 AF lens. Oh, that's a bit of a bold move. Yeah, I know it's a bit of a bold move, but the very second I played about with this lens, I knew I had to have it. So for today's video, I thought we'd talk about some of the reasons why I love this lens in particular and why you should maybe consider it if you're a Sony user. Now before I continue on, I just want to let you know that I'm in no way promoted by or been asked by Sam Yang to do this review. Uh, this is completely my own honest opinion on this lens. So straight out of the box, this lens actually comes packaged up in a neat little high quality case that <laughs> I actually wish a lot more lenses came in because this is really nice. So as you can see, this is quite a petite lens that is almost like a pancake lens that's suitable for these FE mounts. So as I hold this lens, I can feel why it's so inexpensive. Compared to the 28mm f2, which was a metal body and weather sealed, this one's more made of a high-end plastic that's not weather sealed at all. It's a downside, but that's what you get whenever you buy an inexpensive lens. The mount itself may look metal, but again, it's more made of that high-end plastic as before. So the 35mm does come with a lens hood that's already attached on with a twist of the ring on the front. That's the lens hood itself. Now the funny thing about this is if you're planning to use the lens hood, your filter size would be a 40.5mm. If you're planning to use it without, then your front element would be 49mm. So if you are planning on using it without the lens hood, then you would certainly want to get yourself a brand new lens cap. Now I did him and ha as to whether I wanted to use the lens hood or not, but for convenience sake, I'll just keep it on. I did buy myself a Hoya 40.5mm UV filter, so I'll get that screwed on later on. So Samyang are very well known for their manual focused lenses, so it is good that they've brought out something autofocus, especially for the FE mount. So the focus motor is actually built into the lens itself, so the lens isn't going to go in and out when you're focusing. So I've got the lens attached to my Sony A7 Mark I. So let's have a listen to hear what the autofocus motor sounds like, plus check the speed of the lens itself. So as you can hear, there is a little whir sound going on when it comes to the autofocus motor. Uh, if you plan to record videos without an external microphone, this will appear in your video. Uh, but if you do use an external microphone, then you're not going to notice it at all. And for the clip, I did turn on continuous tracking autofocus. So you can see that the lens does keep up to a good speed with moving subjects. Yeah, it's not exactly the fastest lens in the world, but it's still very good. I would love to get trying this out at a gig sometime and see how it holds up in those conditions. Now over the Christmas period I didn't get too much of a play about with this lens but I did take it out a couple of times just to test out to see what it's like at different apertures plus see what the lens distortion is like. So I'm just going to show you some examples of photographs that I've taken whenever I took this out with me. So with the 28mm I had owned before there was quite a lot of distortion going on in my images. So this was a key to wanting to find out how the images hold up with this lens. So as you can see the exposure and such that was taken here in Lightroom. So let's just go to lens correction and see what we can fix up. And as you can see there's not too much distortion going on in this image so it does hold up very well. More on the v netting front than anything but you know it's not too much. And of course let's see what this lens is like at different aperture readings. With seven aperture blades and the widest aperture being f2.8, it might not be the smoothest bokeh in the world, but you know, it'll still look really nice. 
So with this image taken at f2.8, where you might notice just that slight hint of VA netting around the image. Then I pushed it up to f4, where everything is looking really sharp at this aperture. And then to 5.6. We're starting to close our aperture more to f8. And then f11. And f16, where you'll actually start to notice our vionette and starting to come back again, similar to when we're in 2.8. And then finally, F22. And these are just some more examples of images taken with this lens, just some shots around Belfast. Uh, compared to the other images, these have been completely edited, but you can see that the details do hold up very well while using this lens, and you can see why I have actually grown fond of it. So I know this isn't exactly a high-end lens, but for the price, it's fantastic. Compared to its Sony equivalent, which is about double the price. So if you've been in two minds about getting yourself a brand new lens, and maybe you don't have the money to afford the actual Sony stuff, I would certainly look into some of these guys here, especially this lens. You know, it's cheap as chips, but it's a phenomenal lens in itself. So I hope this video was useful to you, and if you just so happen to own this lens, Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about it. So guys, I just want to say in closing, have a happy new year. I hope that 2018 is a fantastic year for each and every one of you out there. So for the final time in 2017, take care and have a great day.